This is Mike from Minimal 3DP. Part of my series for Orca Slicer, I've had a bunch of questions regarding why I selected certain settings as I was putting together my profiles. And I sort of breezed through why I selected what I selected. So today I'm going to take a closer look at why I selected certain settings, and hopefully that'll clear up some of the confusion. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, one of the printers I have is an Ender 3 S1 Plus. And with this printer, I have not converted it over to a profile in Orca Slicer. So as part of this, I'm going to create a new profile and then start the customization process. And as I'm selecting certain settings, I'll explain what I've put together and why. I'm going to start with the setup wizard. And I'm going to pick Creality. And let me scroll down here. Now I'm using the S1 Plus, not the regular S1. I don't see the S1 Plus. What I'm going to do is select Creality Ender 3 S1 Pro. And I'll use that as the basis for my profile. And I'm just going to bring everything in. And I'll hit finish. And the first thing I'm going to do is go up here and rename this. And I want a Creality S1 Plus. I'll make a couple quick changes here. This should be 300. And the bed should be 300 by 300. And I'm just pulling that, if you're curious, right from the build volume on the Creality website. Now, I want to go ahead and change this. I'm running Clipper. We're going to select that. Time cost, I'm not going to worry about that. And everything else, let's change the nozzle type, brass. And we'll need to change the machine code here star code and end code. Let me go ahead and change that too. So let me find what I need for the star code and then we'll come back. Now I use the Clipper Macro Bundle by Jay Shrew and I'll link to that in the video description. I have also done several videos on these. This is an awesome set of macros. Now I'm just going to scroll down and let me copy this set of code. And I'll go over here and I'm going to paste the new star code in. And this will be changed depending on how you have your printer set up. I'm going to scroll down here and copy the end code. And this is much more simplified than what's there. I'm going to go down before layer change. I need to do before layer change and after layer change. We're just going to, again, keep copying this code right here. I'm copying this right from the Clipper macros. I'm pasting this in. And I have one more set of code here to do. This is after layer change. Copy that. And I'll paste that in. Now, I'm also going to go over here to the extruder and just take a quick look at the settings here. I just want to check all these. I think this looks all right. And I'll probably bump these speeds up down the road. I'm not going to worry about that right now. So I just want to save this. So the primary changes I made here was the basic information, the printable area. I'm running Clipper, so I wanted to change the G-code flavor. And then I changed the start and end and layer change codes. And that's all to fit my build. You'll do whatever you need for your printer in your area. Now, I'm going to go down to the filament. I'm going to save this and I want to call this the Creality Ender 3 S1 Plus ELA. And I want to save it. And then we're just going to look through here and make some changes. Now, for the flow ratio, you can use my Clipper calibration spreadsheet to figure out your flow ratio. I'm just going to go over here to Cura and grab this 
from here. I've already calculated it. I just want to copy this setting and then I'm going to paste it into Orca Slicer. I have to make one change because this one's a decimal place, not a percentage. So now I have my flow ratio in there. Now I'm going to scroll down. My first layer, I do 210. And this is the settings I found that work best for this printer. All other layers I do at 205. And I prefer to run my bed at 65. And so that's what I select there. Now, right now, I'm going to leave the volumetric speed at 12 millimeters per second, and I'll probably run some tests to change that. Now, this is the basic setting here, and I'm just going to keep looking through and I've just found over time, no cooling at first layer, that's okay. Everything else looks all right here. Setting overrides, I probably will change this once I mess with the retraction, but right now it's fine. Everything else looks good. I'm just gonna save this. And that gives me the settings for my S1 Plus for the PLA filament. Next, I'm gonna do my actual settings for the print. We're going to change this again. And I usually use just this one profile and change this as needed. So spread this out a little bit, fix that name, and I'm saving it. That's how I need it. Now, I'm going to start with these various settings, quality, strength, speed, support, other. I'm going to try to go through how I select these settings. Now, for those of you that don't know me, I'm big into research. And so one of the things I have is I have this journal article, which basically talks about process parameters and optimization for our characteristics on an FDM printer. Now you can read the article. They've done a bunch of tests, which is awesome. But then I found this diagram. And this diagram is critical for how I do things. Now, starting over here for quality is layer height. So notice in our diagram, let me arrange this on my screen, that layer thickness affects all of these various areas. So it affects model build time, accuracy, roughness, and the various strengths. So layer thickness is incredibly important. Now, if you do too big a layer thickness, it gets rougher. The build time, but the build time goes down. Dimensional accuracy, the thicker the layer, the less accuracy. The thicker the layer for the strengths, I believe it actually increases the strength. So you want layer thickness needs to be a balance. Now, in my case, I usually go with the 0.2, which is default, is my standard layer height. Now, going back here, if I need something that, that needs to be more dimensionally accurate, I'll make that layer height smaller. The smallest I, I typically go would be 0.1. The biggest I would typically go would be 0.28. So if I need something where dimensional accuracy is not important, a build time and, surf and surface roughness don't matter, I'd probably go 0.28, but right now I'm just going to leave this as 0.2. Now, for first layer height, in order to get good bed adhesion, I usually do a real thick layer for that first layer. So I do 0.32. And again, that's the hope there is to make that first layer thicker, and then it's sticking to the bed better. Now, line widths. Going back over here, line width is the same as raster width. And you look through, and raster width is important for particularly flexual strength, but it's also important for roughness, dimensional accuracy, etc., and build time. Now, the setting I've selected, my nozzle is 0.4. I usually go a little bit bigger. I select 0.5. Now, why do I select 0.5 as my width? Well, I like 0.5 because particularly when I start looking at the walls and the shell, 
I'll know that two shells or two walls will be a part that's one millimeter thick. And it's a nice round number. And I found that this does not really affect negatively my dimensional accuracy, although that is key for dimensional accuracy. I don't really see a problem with it. So I just change everything underlying with the 0.5. Now I'm going to load a model so we could start seeing how this affects the time. Yeah, so I've loaded the Benchy. Let's just slice this. So this Benchy will take an hour and 20 minutes. So that's not too bad. Now again, with a much faster printer, I can really get that time down. Now let's look at layer height again. I'm going to go 0 0.28. Now we're down to an hour and five minutes. So just by changing that layer height, I've actually saved 15 minutes. But on the flip side, this model's probably a lot rougher and I'll be able to see the layer lines much more. Now let's change this to 0.1. And that jumps up over an hour. You can see again how the, the layer height really affects speed at least. And I'm gonna flip these back to the default. We can look at those real quick and let's hit slice. And so that's an hour and 29 minutes. So let's change this back to my 0.5. And again, I'm saving about nine minutes. And this should help with various strength as well. I'm just gonna look down at the rest of these settings and nothing here appears like it needs to be changed. So I feel all right with this. So I'm just going to leave everything as is. And I'm gonna hit save before I switch tabs. Now, strength. The first thing here, the wall loops, that's my number of shells. So if I go back over to my diagram, shell width, which is 0.5, and number of shells affects build time, affects the surface roughness. And let me look through the rest of these. So mainly our speed. Oh, and I'm sorry, and strength as well. So right now it's a two. It's taking an hour and 20 minutes. I usually want to do, I do three, which means that the wall, once it's printed, will be three, three lines, which will be 1.5 millimeters thick. Let's hit slice. And that took us up to an hour and 29 minutes. So I have added some time here just by adding some extra, by adding that extra line for the walls. Now, personally, I like that because it'll make my model stronger. At the same time, it also hides the infill better. So I'm gonna leave that at three. Now, top shell layers, that's the layers that would be at the top here at the model and up. I wanna take that down to four. And I'm gonna take the bottom layers down to four as well. So that's typically what I put of that. And let's slice it. Again, that's saving me some time. That's saved me six minutes. And that shouldn't affect the model too heavily. Now, infill, we're looking at Right now it's set to 15%. 15% is not a bad number, but we look at this model. And let me find where we can see some. There we go. There we can see the infill right now. Let's look at what happens when we change this. So I'm gonna bump this up to 90%, and that's taken us to an hour and 46 minutes. You look, the infill is really tiny now. It's almost solid. So this model would be heavier as well as stronger. But we added basically 20 more minutes, I guess, to it just by changing the infill. I usually go on a default print at about 20, and that's just what I select. A lot of times with your models, it'll actually say if you download the model for printables or, or Thingiverse, they'll have what your setting should be. So I typically follow that. You'll notice. I added one minute by adding 5%. Different infills. Right now it's set to the grid. I usually do adaptive cubic. And let me hit slice. That again saved me two minutes. And I like the way this looks. And it's also, I read, a real good uh, balance between speed and strength. Now we could check some of the other ones here. I believe, let's try supportive cubic. And that's again 122. Let's try, not geoid. Honeycomb, if I can find that. That's a good up to 131. And let's try just straight cubic. And that's 124. So I'm going to leave it on the adaptive cubic. 
Again, I'm doing that because from what I've read, that's a balance between speed and strength. And that takes me to an hour and 22 minutes. Now, I'm going to look down here through these settings, and I don't see any other settings I really want to change. And let's save here. And now I'm going to go over to speed. So outer wall is going to be my, where inner wall is going to be my top speed. And I'm going to select 80. And I'm going to do 20 less than this, 60. And in fact, if I want, I can go over and look and see what I had this in Cura. And this is me playing around with these settings. Let's go down to speed here and I'll leave Cura open and we'll look at the speeds. These are just what I've tested over the past six months since I've had this printer. So I'm just going to use these settings and let's do 50. The first layer, first layer infill, 50. Outer wall, and let me look at these. My wall speeds are at 50. I'm actually going to bump that up to 60. And sparse infill, I'll bump that up to 70. Solid infill, 70. Top surface, I'll go 50. Gap infill, 50. And support, we'll do 50. These, like I said, are basically what I'm pulling from over here. Now let's look at this real quick because I think I have an infill speed here. So that's 70. I think that's okay. Let's hit slice. And that takes me down to an hour and 17 minutes. So these settings I'm getting from various tests I've run with this printer. If you go to the Teaching Tech website, they have various speed tests. You can do things there. You can also try using the low rate and the max flow rate tests in Orca Slicer. I'll go to another video on the max flow rate test. I'll watch that in a couple of days. One last change here I think I want to make. Number of slow layers. I'm just going to do one slow layer. And again, that's it. One hour, 17 minutes. That looks pretty good. Now on support, I said, let me, let me go back. The speeds, why did I select what I selected? I select this based on experience. And you'll have to test your printer and see what speeds, what's the max speed you can go and things still look good. I'm gonna to go to support. Now I'm gonna enable support for a minute because I wanna check some things. I wanna build plate only, so I want that checked. And then I'm just gonna select tree because I like tree supports and scroll down here. And base pattern, I think I'm gonna do rectangular grid. Well, let me just leave that as default, that's rectangular. And my interface spacing, I think I'm going to try that at three. I think that's what I need to do in order to have help this peel off better. And I think that's again from testing. Everything else looks okay. I'm going to turn off the support. This way my settings are in here, but I don't have supports on by default. Again, we're still at a minute and 16 minutes. So that's good. I'm going to go to other. I have two scoop, two skirt loops. Skirt distance, I'm gonna put it five. That way the skirt is a little wider around my model place. Let's see the skirt a little bit better now. So I like the skirt a little bit away. Skirt height, I don't want the height of the skirt to be two. I just want one layer. Because again, I don't want it to leave, once it's on the model, I don't want it to leave the model and mess with the skirt. I don't need that. A brim type, I'm going to leave that as auto. Well, this looks good. Now, one change I do want to make is I want to select outer brim and I want to make my brim width five and brim object gap as zero. See, that makes a brim down there, but turn that back to auto. But that leaves my brim width there, so it's already set. Again, we're at 116. I'm going to scroll down here. It doesn't look like there's anything else. I can check exclude objects. I have that enabled in my clipper and that well, I definitely want that checked and that doesn't affect speed at all. I'm just going to hit save. And that honestly is the process I go through to change my settings. Hopefully that was a little bit better explanation of why I selected what I selected. The big ones you have to look at are particularly the layer heights, the walls and the infill. And then also, if you run some calibrations, you want to customize these speeds to the recommended settings or what looks best for your printer.
I hope you find this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below and feel free to email me. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. This is Mike from Minimal 3DP and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15 minute help session with me and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.